all right guys so this is the owl house theory video that i was planning on doing so basically i want to talk about a theory that i kind of am curious on and that i have done research on so this is a theory where people basically think that adrian gray is a basilisk and I did some research and some of the facts really point that he is one. I'm going to be reading off the research that I found and I honestly agree with a lot of these this information. So y'all might disagree but I'm honestly starting to think that he is one so but I don't know yet. List of all things sus about Adrian Gray. Okay so I've been slightly obsessed with the with the illusion coven head since he, his introduction in Hunting Palisman but now that we've had an episode of with him as a natural character, there are some things about him that I feel are super suspicious, and I'm going to try my best to explain them here. Despite being the head of the Illusions Cover, we never actually see him cast any illusions. When we're first introduced to him, when he tries to trick the school and join Coven, in joining, joining covens, he mentions that the illusion of him was cast by a different coven scout. Tom, that Adrian illusion was lacking a certain, hmm, you get me? And given his need to yell for the illusion to to end, rather than just stopping it himself, we can assume that he wasn't in control of the illusion in that scene. We can probably apply this logic to his later scene with the fake Willow and Bellows, as we've seen in the past that illusions need a constant focus when cast by a witch, and he is, seems to be concerned on bullying his actors and kicking Hunter in the back of the head to be casting anything. Him snapping his fingers and the Bellus illusion vanishing could either be read as him dispelling the illusion or calling of the two guards behind it, but given the lack of evidence towards this spell belonging to him, I'm choosing to believe this la latter or later. This leads us on to the next few points. He casts spells without drawing circles and the only two times he draws a, a spell circle, he does so while holding slash using his magic amplifier. In his first scene after Gus calls out, the fake adrian we see him hand off his coffee cup and then in a poof of smoke appears next to and next to and grabs gus he can't touch illusion so either uh, neither of those are fake which mean which that without drawing a spell circle he's teleported across the room we only see him draw a spell circle twice in the entire episode. The first time, he literally uses the magical amplifier to draw it, and the second time, he's holding it. Now, these first three points could just be explained by saying, Oh, he's a coven head. He's super powerful at illusions. He probably just doesn't need to concentrate or draw circles or whatever. But then even ignoring all that, there's this meta is way too focused on looking glass ruins. Gray was sent to Hexide by Bellows to brand children, but the moment the illusion stuff kicks off, and sees the looking glass ruins, he abandons the plan to hunt down Gus and, and figure out where the gra graveyard is. His reasoning is that the glitter stones would be good gifts for Billis, but are they worth abandoning his mission for? The reasoning could be that he figured that the branding mission was a bust and he's in the, in a, in the panic of, I need to please my boss, so he's in Kelly for failing so bad and wants to make it up for him. But then, why does he seem to be happier when he when he sees that the Goddard Suns are in ten, intangible? Intangible. Either way, this is not the face of a super confident person who has everything under control. It's really not. <clears throat> By the way, they're talking about these faces right here. The Looking Glass Ruins have come up a few times now in relation to the EC, and based on how good the Alhabs is at setting up plot lines, it feels like they're building it up to be more important than than it seems then of course there's the one that a bunch of people are talking about he got his mm, handed to him by gus's memory bubble that fully incapitated him like he was still knocked out fully catonic later on like not even hunter got knocked down by this and he's gone through some crap and gray's comments about bad memories feel way prom prominent to just be a, a passing comment there's been a fun trend of, of all the of all the coven heads being ironic in some way a bard with stage fright a plant head who loves killing etc etc so having an illusionist who's been lying about something to get where he is today could be really fun so what's up with this guy let's figure it out yeah he's a basilisk similar fangs tail and smug face similar hairstyles same blue teleportation magic including the inspector from the first day we've only seen four of the five basilixes basilix number four even has the same hair squiggle as gray there's kind of just a weird amount of evidence supporting this theory it's probably not true and if it is 
probably won't have a lot of plot relevance, but I can't help but think there's something else going on with this guy. He's the he's the only common head who showed up who showed up by himself in an episode so far, and there's just a lot of details and potentially foreshadowing stuff happening around him. By the way, I found this other thing that says there are a bunch of theories specula speculating how Bellos knows. So plot twist, they're all correct. Steve has been impersonated by Adrian, who is revealed to be a basilisk. Okay, so a lot of these facts are basically pointing to him being a basilisk, but, and I'm kind of, but yeah, and I'm kind of believing a lot of these, so it might be true, it might be not, but all these are kind of looking like that's true, so yeah. This is all I have, so bye.